Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Seattle U Parent and Family Engagement webinar on supporting your student within in the internship process. My name is Lori Prince. I'm the Director of Parent and Family Engagement, and our office is sponsoring this for you today. I want to make sure you know that if you want to ask a question throughout the process, down on the bottom of your screen, there should be a chat box. And please feel free to pull that up and type in your question, and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. I'm going to pause now and turn the webinar over to our presenter today. My colleague, Mike Levison, is the Associate Director of our Career Services Office, and he's going to walk us through some information. So hang on. Thank you, Laurie. It's great to be here with all of you. I'm excited to talk about internships at Seattle University and how we support our students and how you can be a part of that process as well. Again, my name is Mike Levison. I'm Associate Director of Career Education at Career Services. Uh, we are a centralized office and located in the Pavilion for Leadership and uh, recommend our students visit us as much as possible. We love working one-on-one -on -one with students. We're also in the classrooms and offer events throughout campus as well as bring employers onto campus as well. So internships are certainly a large part of that process. Again, if at any time you have questions, please do type them into our text box and chat. The questions will most likely be the most important part of this presentation. So would love to receive those questions as we go along. I'm just going to move through the presentation. There we go. So just as a brief outline today, these are the topics we are going to discuss. We will talk about the role of internships, especially for resume building and how they can truly be transformational in students, both uh, first destination after graduation and how they talk about their experiences and really tie together a lot of different experiences at the at the university. We'll look at tools like LinkedIn and look at a few ways to utilize th those platforms for career search and specifically internship searches. Uh, Handshake is our online job board where employers are posting positions directly targeting SU students. I will introduce that tool and you will see what students are working with here at the university. And then we have an upcoming internship fair. So this webinar comes at a very good time and you can talk to your students about the internship fair and preparing for meeting with recruiters who are interested in sharing opportunities for internships both throughout the school year and the summer. All right, so I just wanted to start by introducing our profession, professional development model. And we start working with students at a holistic level in which we want to understand and help students go through the process of reflecting on what they know about themselves. We normally talk about the VIPs, their values, their interests, their personality, and their skill sets. And we will start there so that it'll help give us some signposts in career planning, in looking at where to start looking for internships, how to start talking to people in their networks and um, communities of support. We'll look at exploring those options and how to go through a learning um, process in what is career, what do I want to start to invest my time and talent in and and then lead to that experience where we will talk about internships, how to prepare for the application process, and what to do following an internship, and how to continue those lessons learned about career and um, take some next steps. That is a brief introduction to our model and hopefully gives some foundation about where our how we do our work with our students. So I wanted to start with the resume. This is our most often requested service is reviewing resumes. Resumes are a great tool for organizing experience, for reflecting on strengths and where 
students might fit at the moment in the world of work, whether it is at the level of internship or, or maybe it's graduate schools, oftentimes require resumes and such. We start here, but really it's a great document for taking a few steps back and reflecting on where am I starting and where am I going as we uh, work with it. So in this version of the resume, you'll see perhaps a student here, it's a communication studies major and great experience. And this is a student who's taken quite a bit of time and reflection on how do I highlight and, re and present key elements of my experiences. Here we have an experience abroad. We have um, a, a position with RCL University Dance Marathon and such. This is a great starting point. And now in the conversation, we might work with students about where would you like to start exploring uh, professional opportunities? Maybe it's graduate school, maybe it's long-term service, maybe it's internships or even thinking about after graduation. And now the next decision might be about that internship. How do I, knowing where I wanna go, make some decisions now to plan along the way? So this is the same resume. We've just added a strategic internship. Um, and this is a student who was interested in exploring journalism and print media. If you notice now, the experience is the same uh, before adding the internship, but the internship really starts to ground and anchor the resume in the career track that the student is most interested in. It plays a, a vital role not only in the experiencing the industry and building some skills in the industry, but now it starts to tell a story and pull together other pieces of students' involvement on campus and off campus, their academic background, and it can become a central and um, important um, element of a resume for those next applications, perhaps, to that entry-level position after graduation. We'll talk to students both before this process and do that reflective piece about, let's talk about your experience. What excited you most? What did you learn about? Maybe some areas you don't want to explore any further and how can we use that information to make some decisions moving forward? So internships are certainly a very important part of that process. It's also important part of the experiential learning we um, embed into their academic programs to start to ground the theory and the education in the classroom, classroom into those real world experiences. So when talking to students about internships, looking at them in the big picture of a student's professional background can be very important and actually a great part of the process for creating those plans for career development and just exploring different options available to them. Okay, so now I wanna transition into a tool to help students start to look for those internships and how to start to make decisions about which internships to pursue. Most times students have a general sense of different types of internships they might uh, like to explore, but then there's always those other opportunities that we just don't know about. And so opening up the options is always helpful and hopefully um, as important part uh, members of their support, you can be a part of this process as well. LinkedIn is a very important tool, um, very powerful for this process that we often work with students. So why use LinkedIn? Of course, it helps students curate a professional presence online. Normally, when they do have a profile, it's one of the first that an employer will see if they're exploring or researching more about candidates. And employers will actually be able to search for candidates uh, through LinkedIn using keywords and different aspects of background like education. So being online earlier, is uh, certainly what we recommend just to start the process and start to build out those profiles. We talk about just some 
in addition to how to craft a compelling and full profile, we'll talk about a few tips like the photo used and how to distinguish yourself as a professional in the way that you want to appear to employers. Uh, looking at those keywords and pairing what you include in your profile with perhaps keywords you're seeing in position descriptions and then turning off edit notifications. Otherwise, every little change to a profile will be sent to your LinkedIn community and oftentimes our students are making changes um, with some frequency throughout their time here at the university. So um, we, we recommend turning off those notifications. We'll look at a element of LinkedIn. I'll go into the platform where they can start to explore options about how do I search for opportunities connected to my major that are maybe even outside of the most traditional career paths associated with it. And there's an exciting way to do that by accessing our alumni community, which, which I will be showing you. We, you, LinkedIn is also a great social network and social platform for, for connecting, having conversations. It's career oriented so and professionally oriented. So those kinds of questions and ways of reaching out are expected through the platform and gives a great forum for students to keep in touch with perhaps mentors from past experiences or reaching out to new contacts, maybe through our alumni network. And we'll look at that more closely as well. And then finally, how LinkedIn can be a source of information for industry knowledge and opportunities. So what I'm going to do now is go into LinkedIn and I think it will pop up with my profile right away. And I just wanna want to introduce a few tools. This is what we would also be introducing to students. And for parents and family, it's also a great reference point for talking to students about some first steps in this process, especially for searching for an internship. So uh, going into profile, um, we will talk to students about all the elements of the profile. We all also have a profile builder, which is included in the PowerPoint. That'll be our next slide. Some things to note, including education, skills is an important element of LinkedIn. Uh, these all will become keywords and ways for LinkedIn to filter certain opportunities for students directly connected to their profile. So that's why we always want to start with the profile because LinkedIn will work um, for students in this way and create some shortcuts for them to find those positions that most relate to their background. So if you go into jobs, the recommended jobs are going to be connected both to the profile and to past searches and use of LinkedIn. You can also go in to customize the jobs that you see by going into the career interests at the top of the page. And here you can give location, types of industries of interest, change it directly to internship and then internship opportunities will be more likely to appear and different types of industries to explore. I find LinkedIn is one of the more powerful and um, valuable job databases for this type of broad exploring of opportunities. And certainly they do a great job in honing in on specific candidates, backgrounds and interests. So great place to start. And again, once you fill out these categories, you can go back to jobs and then over time, it'll start to update with those opportunities that are tailored specifically to the user. Of course, at any time, you can always do more broad searches and it'll filter for those searches as well. Another incredible tool with LinkedIn is the connection to our alumni network through the platform. What I'm going to do is type in Seattle University. Choose it from the drop down. And I'm going to select C alumni. 
and it's going to give me access to our 42, nearly 43,000 alumni on LinkedIn. And here I can start to do some searches of those alumni. And I just went to the next button and I can see what they studied. So here I might want to choose a background or a major similar to my students major. Um, they give you the top choices. I want to look at communication studies, which isn't in the top 20, but with a simple search, I can easily find it. So here's communication general. I'm just going to clear that search term. And now these are students who, and alumni, who have degrees in communication. And say I'm interested in seeing how they've applied that degree to different areas, I could further filter it out, or maybe I just wanna see all the ways that alumni with communication studies degrees have applied that education. Here, I'm going to filter by a few, um, perhaps business development, sales, and marketing is a particular interest for further exploration today. And now I can review all of our alumni with their positions and how they've applied that degree. I can also look at individual profiles. So say that I'm interested in work with Seattle Storm account executive, that seems interesting to me. And I can go into the profile and start to look at the background and even the career track of one of our alumni and learn uh, from this experience as well. Um, maybe there's some opportunities or some businesses and organizations that maybe I wanna look for similar opportunities today in that background. There's also the option to send an in-mail message to introduce yourself as a current student and in a similar program, perhaps some aspect of the background is of particular interest and even to suggest a phone call or, or an opportunity to meet to learn more about that industry. And so this is a way for engaging our alumni network and creating and extending that professional network in the same way. When we work with students through this process, our office certainly will work one-on-one -on -one with students and coach them through this process. So they can always meet with us before taking this step. And we will talk about the whole process from preparation to the invitation and request to how to prepare for that first meeting as well. All right, so those were the main functions of LinkedIn that I wanted to to present because all of them can be a part of that internship process, whether it's researching internships or looking for opportunities with the jobs function or starting to reach out to our alumni to learn more about specific industries to see if there are, if this is an industry of interest and if so, what might be the types of opportunities to start to look for within that industry. What I always tell students is the more people involved in the professional formation and career development process, the better. It's certainly not a process um, they have to do alone. And in fact, the more people they invite into the process, normally the more rich and successful they find it to be. I want to pause here before I move on just to see if there are any questions specific to LinkedIn. If you do have questions about LinkedIn or at any time, uh, do still feel free to include them. I'll be able to see them on this chat box here. Um, otherwise, I will uh, continue forward. This is the LinkedIn profile checklist. It is a part of this presentation, so a resource to look at 
in the future. Again, we also have handouts for students and we'll walk through the different parts of building a LinkedIn profile. And this gives us some great suggestions about considerations, ways to look at background and how to present it to employers. Okay, so I want to, oh, we have some questions. Yes, there are some questions about LinkedIn and security, especially in sharing information that may be sensitive. A benefit of LinkedIn, I'll try to go back into it. is that you can control completely the information that is shared or not shared through LinkedIn. This should do it. And the caveat is the information that you can view among other profiles. So say you're interested in seeing the information of our alumni or, or other professionals in the industry. You can only see the level of information that you are willing to share. And so um, I can always go to settings and privacy and privacy and start to make changes to who can see different elements of my background and profile. Of course, I'm also able to control this simply by what I include in the profile itself. So this is editing my public profile. I can make the changes here. I can also go into specific categories, change the information or change the privacy setting as well. So LinkedIn has done a great job in ensuring their users are sharing only the type of information that they want. I also have a question about the basic free level LinkedIn. That's what I've been presenting on today and I think it's quite powerful. There are some extra features that are specifically helpful to job candidates, perhaps during a period of intentional job search, uh, if paid for the premium version. And we can certainly work with students through that. But in terms of the types of work we do with them while they're students, the free version is quite robust and what I've been presenting today. And one question just about how to access our alumni network one more time, and I think it's so powerful, would uh, be very happy to show that process again. So here I'm just at the home page. I'm going to type in Seattle University and from the drop down choose Seattle University and see alumni. And here I'm back at that alumni page and can start to use their suggested filters or type in keywords myself. All right, so I'm going to move on, but I love seeing the questions as they're coming up. And just one last one, does the internship recruiters looked at LinkedIn profiles? Absolutely, and in fact, recruiters are often spending time on LinkedIn to search profiles. So, so that's another reason perhaps to make it a little bit more public is that you become more searchable among recruiters and we have students with recruiters reaching out to them. That's nice and our, again our office can help students navigate that process as well. Handshake is a new platform that we're using to connect employers who are have presence here on campus and want to want to be recruiting our students, connecting them to our students through online posts for internships, part-time jobs, full-time jobs, and other opportunities associated with professional experience and application. This is a brief synopsis of how to access Link uh, Handshake, rather, and we hand this out to students, specifically when they have questions about it, although I will say it's quite intuitive. So when they make their way to our website, I will, sh I will uh, point out how they can access it. It's quite prominent. And if they 
ever wanted to access it again, they would just go to our website and they could start accessing it there. But this is a very easy process and easy way to access Handshake. All students have Handshake accounts, so they simply need to log in to activate them. Handshake is also a networked tool, so we are connected to 300 colleges across the nation, and employers who are working with those colleges have the opportunity to opt into our system as well. What we find is that employers do want to opt into our system, especially with our exciting and robust and growing economy here in Seattle, and the number of employers who are engaging us and our students is multiplying quickly with this new tool. So it's quite exciting and I look forward to showing you more about it. So this is what students would see going to our website. You can see it here, seattleu.edu slash career services, or they can search career services on SU's main site. And Handshake login is right at the top. When students access it, they're going to use their normal credentials that they would use for accessing their email. It's all networked and this should actually, because I'm already in the system, bring me right to the system. Actually, I'm gonna go back. Nope, that didn't work. This is, I apologize, this is a different computer. So one more try. So this should work now. Ah, well, my apologies. It says I'm logged in as me. I am going to move on from this section because it's not logging me in. My apologies for that. What we would see in Handshake is how to search for internships specifically with students and how to filter them uh, given students specific interests. We would also look at the profile and how to set up the profile. I apologize that the technology on this account is not working and uh, something I will look into in the future. Okay, so I do wanna plug our internship fair and it is on February 6th. It's coming up quickly and what students can do is start to research the the employers who are going to be at the fair. Uh, again, that is through Handshake. And at the top of their homepage, there is an events section, and they can go into the events and start to see who is going to be at our career fair. Here are some of our um, premier employers, and they then can start looking at the internships they are currently offering and start to prepare questions for recruiters who will be at the fair. Um, for specific opportunities. We also offer career fair prep and we will work with students for creating a resume specific 
to certain opportunities at the career fair, um, work on statements of introduction, especially when a, meeting new recruiters and talk through maybe some key questions that they may have for opportunities either this year, in the summer, or in the future. So again, that is our internship fair. It is uh, Tuesday, February 6th, and it is a very fun event. It's in our Campion Ballroom, it's packed. Uh, we will have 40 employers, uh, primarily from the region, and all recruiters um, wanting to speak with our students, wanting to collect resumes, and oftentimes what we find is they are reaching back out to our students to follow up. We do have also employers who are scheduling on-campus interviews, so sometimes those resumes submitted to recruiters become interviews right on campus and a great way for us to remain connected to those opportunities and uh, offer them to our students. Any questions about um, career fair? The timing, I see a question about timing of the fair. If students are unable to attend this fair, we do have opportunities throughout the school year for in which employers are scheduling individual information sessions. So those are, are always promoted to our students broadly and they can always attend an information session and talk to a recruiter um, after that session. We also offer a internship and or career fair once a quarter. So if not this quarter, perhaps in a subsequent quarter, we also have other uh, events that are specific to certain majors and areas of studies or colleges. Those will be promoted among students specific to their major. And those are also opportunities to engage employers. I'm looking at the questions. It, it, the career fair is advertised on campus. Most of the internships are located in Seattle. And this is a very important question, when to attend the fair. So freshman year, there is a lot to learn about the process of when to apply to internships, how to be engaged in year one to start to plan for that first internship, second internship, or even opportunities after graduation. So we recommend students oh, yeah, I can't. start the process as lower. quickly yeah. as possible. And um. So freshman year is certainly a good time to start. If you have, I, I notice a few folks maybe don't have don't the know. option on. Not me, you could Lars, I don't know. That would be great. Okay. Great. And well, if you want to. Um, yeah, so again, if, if I'm sure folks could mute their just presence okay. on the site that would be terrific ah and the microphone is in the lower left hand corner ah thank you very very much okay let's see yes and so again at any point we recommend students be engaging our office we work with students during orientation to invite them on day one to visit us and the career fair can certainly be a part of that process. This can also be a very helpful process. There's a question about students who are still undecided about major and career. Yeah. This is a great way to explore different options for students. Oftentimes students will also have questions about specific majors if they're still deciding among a few about um, there's even a site, what can I do with this major? The alumni feature, alumni feature through LinkedIn is a great way to see what other people have done with the major. And oftentimes it's in 
many, many different industries, which is exciting for students to see. And we can certainly be a part of that conversation as well. There's a question about students who are not um, residing in the Seattle area when away from SU. Again, because Handshake is networked across the country, we have opportunities all across the country, um, robust opportunities, many opportunities that we can help students navigate Handshake to direct searches to those areas outside of Washington State. And this webinar is being recorded and will be posted online. So any information shared today will be, you'll be able to access it again. Internships are oftentimes paid. There's a question about paid internships and there's a way to filter searches in Handshake to look specifically for paid internships. And there are opportunities for freshman students to be searching for internships. There is a way to filter the search again for organizations and companies who are specifically either open to all class levels or seeking freshmen <clears throat> for internships. And the internship fair is three times a year, and that's when it's broadly promoted across campus, but we do have specific events tailored to different colleges, majors, and programs, so always good for students to be aware of different events bringing employers onto campus as well. Okay, we are getting um, close to the end, so this is some information about how students can access our uh, resources, our programming, our services. I like to highlight career advising. It is unique to SU that we spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with students in this setting and are able to work with students very closely this way. And I always try to direct students back to career advising whenever we're working with them across the university in different programming. So do please share this information with your students and encourage them to visit us. These are different uh, categories and topics students can work with us. And otherwise, our website and career resources we offer through our center are helpful for students. Oops. We are presenting on campus and pre presenting workshops in classrooms. Again, employers are engaged on campus throughout the year with information sessions and on-campus interviews, and our career fairs are a terrific way for students to be engaged in the career development process starting from day one, freshman year. And then this is my information, so if you have any follow-up questions, uh, following this presentation, do feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk to you more specifically about how we support students in internships, but also more broadly as well. All right, so that comes to the end of our presentation. And if there are any questions, uh, please do feel free to ask. Yes, the presentation will be available on the parent and family engagement website. For this presentation, it was only extended to parents and family, but we are canvassing the campus with as many opportunities both to promote our services and to work with students in the classroom, in events promoted throughout campus, and then in our office through advising and such. We promote 
our services to students beginning in orientation and inviting them to engage in, in our programming and with our staff from day one. We love working with our students as freshmen so that we can work with them throughout their time at the university. All of our events and programming are also uh, promoted in a very uh, intentional and targeted way to the audience, whether it's a specific college or a specific class year, and then some of our programming and events mm. and services are promoted broadly. But we're always very happy to have the help from our partners and from you all to continue to encourage students to be thinking about career services and their own professional development as soon as possible. There's a question about the type of experience that's helpful for resume building and internships. Of course, we looked a little bit about how the role that internships might play in that process, but we encourage students to explore all types of experience, volunteer experience. It could be specific projects embedded in their coursework and their academic programs, community engagement, on-campus engagement and leaderships. There are many ways to build the resume uh, with experience throughout students' four years here at the university. There's a question about a student, does a student have to use LinkedIn to, in order to find an internship? No. Um, LinkedIn can be a helpful tool, but then there are other tools as well. Handshake, again, is a great tool because employers are specifically seeking out Seattle University students, and it's a great way to make connections there. Glassdoor.com is another tool quite powerful for finding internships and uh, part-time, full-time jobs. Indeed is another popular job database. And then of course they can always come directly to our office and we can help students in the process as well. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be spending this time with you all. And again, if you have any questions, do feel free to contact me. This webinar will is being recorded and will be available um, on the uh, Parent and Family Engagement website. I do apologize about the handshake and technology mishap and would be happy to answer any questions offline about that as well. This is Lori Prince again. Thank you, Mike, for sharing your expertise and time with us today. We knew this would be a very important topic for family members. Again, we will hopefully get this posted by tomorrow morning on our parent and family engagement website, which is accessible to your student as well. There's no need to log in. It's just the main parent family engagement site for Seattle U. And if you have other webinar topics you'd be interested in hearing about, please feel free to email me at parents at seattleu.edu and we'll try to make those happen for you. Thanks to all of you and have a wonderful day. Cool. <clears throat>